How to Create a Seamless Instagram Carousel in Canva. Hello everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through, step by step, how you can design a beautiful, seamless Instagram carousel using Canva. Whether you're making something for your personal brand, your business, or just for fun, this method will help you create a professional-looking carousel in no time. So, let's jump right in. First, log into your Canva account. You don't need Canva Pro for this. The free version works perfectly fine for our purpose. Once you're in, click on the Create button in the top left corner of your dashboard. From here, type Instagram into the search bar. You'll notice Canva shows different Instagram formats, but for posts, the most common sizes are 1080 times 1350 pixels for portrait posts. These take up more vertical space in the feed and are very eye-catching. 1080 times 1080 pixels for square posts. These are the classic Instagram size. For this tutorial, I'm going with the portrait size, 1080 by 1350, since it's the most widely used for carousels. Now here's the key part. We're not going to design individual slides separately. Instead, we'll create one large canvas that includes all the slides in a single seamless design. This allows elements to flow naturally from one slide to the next when users swipe through your carousel. To figure out the width of this large canvas, take the width of one slide, 1080 pixels, and multiply it by the number of slides you want. For example, if I want four slides in my carousel, 1080 times, four equals 4,320 pixels. So my canvas size will be 4,320 by 1,350 pixels. So for this example, I'm creating a carousel post with four sliding images. A carousel post on Instagram is basically a single post made up of multiple images that people can swipe through. And by designing it as one big canvas, we can make those slides connect seamlessly. Since each Instagram portrait post is 1,080 pixels wide, I just multiply 1,080 times four because I want four slides. That gives me 4,320 pixels for the width. Now I'll head over to Canva and create a custom size width, 4,320 pixels, height, 1,350 pixels. Click Create New Design and you'll see a super wide canvas appear. It might look huge at first, so I like to zoom out so I can see the entire thing on my screen. Now you might be wondering, how do I know exactly where one slide ends and the next begins? This is where Canva's guides come in handy. Go to File, Top Left Menu. Click View Settings and turn on Rulers and Guides. You could drag guides manually, but that's tedious. Instead, go back to File and choose Add Guides. Select Custom Guides. Set the gap to zero and the number of columns to four, since we have four slides. Now you'll see neat purple dividing lines showing exactly where each slide will be cut when we split the design later. You can always remove these guides when you're done. Next, I'm going to start designing. For this tutorial, I'll keep it simple. I'll click on the background and add a gradient. At first, I try pink and white, but I don't like how it looks. I switch to blue tones. Better, but still too bright. So I tone it down with softer pastel shades going for a warm pastel pink paired with a gentle pastel blue for a more pleasing, balanced look. Once I'm happy with the background, I head over to Elements in Canva and start searching for images to add to my design. Next, I'm going to search for Makeup in Canva. I head over to the Elements tab, switch to the Photos category, and start scrolling through until I find an image that fits the overall look I'm going for. Let's say I settle on this particular photo. It has good lighting, nice colors, and works well with the soft tones of my background. Rather than just dropping the image directly onto the canvas, I want to give it a bit more style and visual interest. So I go back to the search bar in Elements and type Frames. Frames in Canva are essentially placeholders that you can drop images into, and they'll automatically crop to that shape. There's a huge variety, from simple rectangles and circles to more artistic shapes like brush strokes, letters, or even abstract patterns. For this design, I'm going to choose a circular frame because it feels softer and more polished. I drag it onto my design, position it roughly where I want it, and then simply drop my makeup photo into the frame. Canva automatically crops it to fit the shape, which instantly makes it look more professional. 
I then resize the frame so it's a bit larger, making sure it sits perfectly between the two sections of my carousel where I want it to appear. I take a moment to double check alignment so the composition feels balanced and visually appealing. With the image in place, it's time to add some text. I zoom in on the first panel so I can work in detail without distraction. This also helps me keep the text well within the boundaries of each slide, so nothing important gets cut off when the carousel is split later. For my headline, I type makeup hacks in a bold, easy to read lettering. I place it at the top of the slide so it's immediately visible when someone swipes to this panel. Then, I add a second text box for an interactive cue, something like swipe to, so viewers know there's more to see. To make this swipe instruction stand out, I change the font color to a warm, peachy pink that complements the rest of my palette. I also consider adding a shape behind it for emphasis. I go back into elements and adjust the border thickness or line weight. I set the fill color to be slightly transparent so it doesn't feel too heavy against the background. Once the shape is in place, I position the swipe text inside it and add a small arrow graphic to the right. This gives a clear and attractive visual signal to the viewer that they should continue to the next slide. At this point, the first panel is looking cohesive with the framed image, the bold headline, and the engaging swipe indicator. This same attention to placement, spacing, and design consistency will carry through the rest of the carousel so it feels like one continuous, seamless piece when swiped through on Instagram. Next, I'm going to adjust the swipe text so it stands out more clearly. I head over to the color panel and choose a warm, peachy pink tone that complements the overall color palette of my design. This little pop of color draws attention without overpowering the rest of the slide. This combination of shape, text, and arrow gives a clear visual signal to the audience that they should move on to the next slide. I also take a moment to make sure everything is perfectly aligned. A little alignment work now makes the final design feel polished later. Now that our first panel is complete, it's time to start building the second post in the carousel. This is where the actual content begins to unfold. I decide to add a text headline that says, Makeup Tips, to introduce the topic. Underneath, I type out my first tip, Always Use Waterproof Foundation. This kind of tip is practical and encourages the viewer to keep swiping for more. From here, I can get creative with the layout. I might add supporting images, small icons, or decorative elements to enhance each tip. This is where Canva's Elements tab becomes my best friend. For continuity between slides, I search for decor and choose a few design accents, giving the illusion of a seamless flow when the carousel is swiped through. I continue building my slides one by one, alternating between text-based tips and image-heavy designs, making sure each one feels part of the same visual family. I also experiment with color variations, so each slide feels fresh while still matching the overall theme. Once all my slides are ready, it's time for the most important step, splitting the wide design into individual images for Instagram. If you've never done this before, Canva makes it easy using an app integration. On the bottom left menu, I click Apps and type Image Splitter in the search bar. The one I'm looking for is called iMit Splitter. This is a completely free to use tool right inside Canva. After clicking to open it, I see two options. I can either upload an image from my computer or export my current design directly into the splitter. Since I've been working on my carousel in Canva, I choose the option to export the current design. Once your carousel design is complete, the final step is to split the extra wide image into individual slides that can be uploaded to Instagram. Inside the image splitter app, simply click on export design. Canva will give you the option to choose the size and quality of your export. I always recommend keeping the quality high so your images remain crisp on mobile screens. After selecting your preferences, click Export. Next, you'll see the splitting options. Since we're creating four separate slides, we'll set the number of columns to four. The number of rows should stay at one or zero depending on the tool's labeling because we're only splitting horizontally. These settings ensure that the design is cut exactly where we planned our guides earlier. Once your settings are correct, click Split Image. 
The tool will process your design and neatly divide it into four equal slices. From there, click on Add Images to New Pages. This is a handy feature because it sends each sliced image directly back into your Canva project as separate pages. When you reload your design, you'll find all four cropped images saved in your Canva library and linked to your project. You can view them in sequence to confirm they align perfectly. The first image will be your opening slide, followed by the second, third, and fourth, all designed to flow seamlessly when swiped through on Instagram. And there you have it, a smooth professional carousel post ready to share with your audience. Before we wrap up, I want to say thank you for following along with this tutorial. If you found these steps useful, please share this video with someone who might also benefit from learning how to create their own seamless Instagram carousels. It's a small action that helps our community grow and allows more people to learn these creative skills. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future tutorials. We have plenty more design tips, Canva hacks, and social media strategies coming your way. Yeah. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.